Welcome to the BFME 1 on the page 2.22 for a video commentary between good and evil, between Rohan and Isengard. That's my second most favorite matchup in the game after Gondor against Isengard. I mean, all the matchups between good and Isen are pretty fun to play, to watch, and also to commentate. And hopefully, you guys will also enjoy this. Before Uruk put opening uh, into the Uruks, he was able to capture both the settlements outside. And now the Uruks are looking for those sneaky little peasants to deny them to enter Isengard's territory. And all you can do is run, but not that's something you can't even do because Uruks are faster than you. He's gonna group them up and use Warchant. And now he's looking for the second peasant who was coming through the middle. That's a very interesting pathway from the Rohan player, and I think that's gonna work out actually pretty nicely. And that's the benefit of trying something new your opponent won't expect. He won't maybe be able to destroy the Lambert Mill because the Uruks are there, but maybe he can destroy it because the workers are not repairing the structure, which they off obviously should. Actually, he will be able to take it down. That's kind of crazy, bro. What a pathway. And remember, the Isengard player opening with only uh, Uruk Pit without a Furnace will kind of make him poor now after losing one of those two Lambert Mills. But he needs to creep for that reason as soon as possible. Mary was able to get cloaked around this location. He might get the last hit. Ooh, close. The money, the money, 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 money. And he also got... Actually, I, I don't know. The colors are super uh, similar, so it's hard for me to tell. This game was also in the BFME 1 Online Battle Arena. And I believe the players didn't choose any color. That's why the colors are so pretty much identical. It's two blue tones, which is uh, not super clear on the minimap. I'm sorry for this. In tournaments, we are always paying attention to that, but in normal ranked games, we can't influence that, okay? Double farm into the steeple. And we have two farms outside, it means he has the 15% wood bonus. And not wood bonus, food bonus rather. Making his Rohirrim slightly cheaper. The start wasn't the greatest for Rohan. Um, I think it's okay for Aizen, because he's now moving to the second creep with the Uruks. He's gonna split them up a little bit and focus down the layer exclusively. This is the fastest way of creeping this. You might not be able to destroy um, the whole creep, including the works, but you can at least destroy the layer, which is the more important part. But it's gonna go and focus down the works instead. And it's gonna do the same thing also in the middle of the map. So Aizen is looking pretty strong in this game. And also the host player of this game is also Isengard, which is just super important to mention. The host advantage in BFME games is still, you know, quite big. The Rokirim are coming. Will they be able to intercept the creeping from Isendom? That's the big question. Because the pikemen are already up on the field and it looks like he needs to give up on that creep and Eisen will be taking the money and the creep plus the power points he was able to collect. He has now two power points in total which can be invested and should be invested into the industry to get to fill up the base way, way faster. Also, this creep was kind of a big fail because he didn't focus down the layer. And yeah, he will be able to destroy the layer through but I don't think he has what it takes to destroy, uh, to kill the work there, you know? And the Rohirrim are coming to clean up the Uruks anyway. And they don't die to one trample, they were in the shield wall formation. But the pikemen are here. Maybe he might save the level 2. Yeah, he will actually be able to save the level 2 Uruk, that's pretty big. Now you can send him back to the base and you should be in a good spot. We have still a couple of creeps left on the map for of Isonis, for example, this creep over there and also this creep over there. But besides that, all the creeps were taken, Isengard was taking most of them, that's going to be the creep number 4 for Aizen, which is super impressive against the Rohan faction. The money will be, I believe, splitted. And Rohan is not looking too hot. He has only two Rohirrim up on the field. Losing the map against Aizen means you will die slowly. You need to think about the solution. And let's see what he's going to come up with, you know? Um, you have, like, that's why you need to love Rohan. Rohan has so many options. You can go for the Entourage, for example, against Aizen. It's pretty effective, too. You can go for Heroes. You can go for uh, Rohiri Marcha. You can go for Legolas, for example, you know. You can go for Peasant Spam. You have plenty of options. Aizen, going for the Warg Pit, expecting to see and deal with uh, plenty of Peasants. The Warg Riders will be a counter to this. And they have only 20 seconds recruit time, so you will get them up on the field super fast and super quickly. Industry being quite helpful, obviously. But the eco from Aizen overall is looking super duper nice. 
And the stable has been demolished. And actually Rohan is going for a dwarf. When trouble reese is, call a dwarf. Let's see. I've never seen this strategy before in 2.2. But Gimli has gotten a lot of love in this game. So maybe he can make something work. And today we will actually be focusing for the first time after a long time into the son of Klein Gimli. Welcome to the champion spotlight. <laughs> Okay, I like Gimli, dude. Look this beard, bro. You, you can't get just... This is like... You know... Boom! This is uh, jeans, you know? You can't grow a beard like this, bro. So the bears are come. Pikeman combination. Super, super strong. Gimli, of course, will need a lot of time. He's not as fast. And maybe not the greatest choice against uh, Aizen. Because Aizen has very fast-moving units. Which Gimli can never catch up with. But you can use the extra every 4-5 seconds, get it on cooldown, use it again. And the power spike of Gimli we are looking for is the Slayer, which will make him to Speedy Gonzalez. He will be zooming around the map a little bit, killing heroes, and that's why Lourdes has to always be crippling Gimli. Otherwise, kaboom! <laughs> He's gonna cause lots of trouble. Now, the Stubborn Pride is also not a bad uh, passive skill from Gimli. But he needs to play against a faction that has actually the chance to fear the enemy units, which Isengard can't. Like Gondor can, for example, with the Horn of Gondor, with the Cloudbreak. Rohan can with Cloudbreak or the Elaine deal ability from Aragorn. And Mordor, obviously, with like two Nazgûl, Witch King. And also the Roar ability from the Drummer Troll. That comes to Vorchan on the Vorks. Vorchan is stronger than only heavy armor. And for that reason, he's now forced to disengage. And also, I don't know why, why the Eisenhower player went for the Tinted Land over there. They have too much armor on the land, bro. Uh, Lourdes has to be careful, though. You can't fight without level 3 against Gimli. That's not going to be possible. Two power points collected for Rohan, but he's struggling. He has, like, literally zero map control. I mean, he has one farm, which is about to be destroyed. But playing for the map with only two Rohirrim against plenty of pikemen is not the easiest thing to do. This combo is super weak against Gimli, the Uruk Pikeman combination, because they are not as fast as normal regular Uruks or Pikeman. So making this combo will feed a lot of experience points to Gimli. He was all about to unlock his leap attack. The jump. When he's screaming in the campaign for Balin, when he jumps from the tomb, you know? Epic scene. And by the way, guys, we are also working on a re rework of the campaign with plenty of new content. We will, have, we will add a lot of new heroes, new, new units to the game. Ooh, what an extra. So you will be able to play the re reworked campaign of BFMU1 very, very soon. Hopefully until the end of May. So starting June, you should be able to give it a shot, you know? Make it a bit more challenging, but much more fun. And still a bit easier than the previous reworked campaign. Because we have heard a lot of complaints about it. That some missions are impossible. For that reason we decided to not only change, it, change this a little bit. But also rework the entire campaign again. The Alvin summon has been placed and used at the bottom side of the map. And he has no heal for the Gimli. So he needs to be careful. Because Lourdes when he gets level 3. Gimli will be in trouble. He's all about to hit level 2. We'll get to level 3 very very soon. Not many settlements upon the field for Rohan. And Rohan is a money which needs a lot of resources. More than any other faction, really, to get to the spike you are looking for. You need all upgrades, you need fire arrows, you need Rohir Marchum, you need all of that shenanigans. Oh, he was thinking that he will be following him, actually. <laughs> Otherwise, maybe Gimli just drink a little bit, you know, too much. Too much room. Too much beer. Level 2. Oh, but he's gonna lose the Vorks. Extra, imagine he, if he had it there, actually, he would be able to finish off the level almost three Vork Rider Hort. Ah, that's not fun to play against, bro. He cripples you and you can't move. Now it's gonna become dangerous. When he cripples you next time, he will have Carnage. 
But if Kimni gets level 5, he doesn't need to be scared of anything. He's gonna use the Carnage out to fight against Rohirrim. Boom, extra. Oh my god, Lourdes might be in trouble. He's gonna put him in, right? He's gonna put him in, into the tower. He falls to Legolas, but what are, what's gonna happen if you lose the Citadel, Matthew? <laughs> what's gonna happen there, bro? Actually shooting the Rohirrim down, and he's bringing Pikeman. Um, extra! Extra! Oh, he's gonna extra the Vorks and kill the Lords with the Rohirrim Warriors. If he can, he's pressing S and move and S and move. But Legolas is coming. Oh my god, one more hit. Kill him. He's gonna use Palantir, bro. If he survives that, he's a survivor. Put him on island or something. Put him on island, bro. Put Lords on island. I can't believe it, bro. I cannot believe it. I can just not believe it. I believe I can fly. But they, he had Tainted Lander, actually, which gives him a lot of armor and resistances. That's why the Vorks are not getting killed. But Legolas is in trouble and will be getting killed in exchange. So Gimli is a survivor, too. Gimli has a 2200 health, but the health is not really what's important about Gimli. He has a heavy hero armor set. It means... He's taking little to no damage from sources. So he's super beefy, especially against arrows. You need to, you can tank him. Like he's like built different. It's a it's a it's the only dwarven unit or hero in the entire game BFM1. And he is um, you know the proof that size doesn't matter everything. Legolas will have to be revived level 2. After the first couple of minutes into the game, we see Matthew, the Isinger player, having the Field of Fires because he does not care about the enemy leadership bonuses. He needs more money. That's why he's going for the, you know, industry plus this combination. Super, super powerful. Lourdes, almost level 5. That's going to be even more powerful. He's going to use the Warchant now. Warchant was used. Actually, where was it used? Uh, on the Vorks, I believe. Plus the Palantir. To run him down, but the Rohirrim are very close to the castle. There is a post and gate, so it should be kind of good. He will get away in safety. Okay, Lords in the meantime shooting, and we get actually many many good players in the game now. Ooh, but the level five Rohirrim, beautiful heal trample actually, but that's the enemy L land. Now it's not anymore. Now you can trample one more time. Beautiful micro with the level 7 Rohirrim warriors. Doing what they just did in the films too. Trampling, killing Uruks over and over again. Very well done. Beautiful. Gimli in the meantime jumping on the pikeman. Getting power points collected. He's now level 5. Slay unlocked. It means if Lourdes doesn't cripple Gimli. But he makes the mistakes to cripple for example Legolas. He will die. Like you can't get away from him. He will just use Slay him. And then he will run you down. You know, Legolas in the meantime trying to farm some power points, but Vorks are having super high armor against heroes. Level 3, and they will not die to the Hawk Strike. The Lambert Mill will be destroyed. What is the plan of Rohan though? Does he have Fire Arrow purchase? The answer to this question is yes, he does have Fire Arrow purchase. And also, Legolas has our, uh, leadership in this game, but only for the Alvin Warriors, which I'm assuming he won't go for because he demolished the archery range and going for the Rohirrim marches instead but without Elmer leadership it will be kind of difficult now here is the thing though Eisen didn't go for the freezing rain it means he has no way of denying the opponent the leadership bonuses and even though he has only um, Theorin but remember when you go into the base you can build a statue you can also go later on for Aragorn you can actually out uh, leadership the Isengard faction Lourdes has been killed Sharku will be recruited now as a Vork Riders hero, super useful in this situation to make the Vorks a bit more tanky with his leadership. And this way you can also fight against Gimli. And also three archers kind of works on the Rohirrim Archer. So you can give them free experience. You can get them from level 2 to level 3 for example. And then each level afterwards will take you more. You will have to give it twice to get them from level two, 3 to level 4 for example. But it's free experience every 2 minutes. So it should be pretty good. There comes Sharku, the leader of the Vork Riders. Pretty nice hero. 
But there comes the war chant in they are going um, uh, Legolas. Use knife fighter, he's gonna get tanky, but not tanky enough, bro. There is just too much DPS, man. The war chant, forge bleeds, and whole ability combined is hella damage. And Legolas, you know, he's a damage house, but he's not super tanky. Look at them glow, shine bright like a diamond. Where is Gimli at when we need him? Gimli is coming actually. Gimli is look coming. Five power points collected for Aizen. Three power points collected for Rohan. And we need to always keep an eye on Gimli now. He's up to full HP. So I don't think you can kill him that quickly, you know. He's not Legolas. He is, uh, you know, Gimli. Gimli. Rohan has some map control, but he's losing farms left and right. Uh... I mean, trampling into the pikeman as king of Rohan is not the greatest thing you should do. The boom, son! The wombo combo, baby! The slayer plus leap attack, and just before you land, you put Alvin Wood to deny enemy leadership bonuses. Oh my goodness! It's like, it's like the same. It's like even more satisfying than like going for a blast land combination, like leap land combination and also slayer buffs up your damage of the leap attack so it gives you 100 percent uh, damage boost which means your leap attack will when you are under the effect of the slayer deal double the damage double the damage you know and also like a short cooldown to every minute you can do that he's gonna get crippled will gimli die though that's the golden question again he's a beefy hero boys he has no leadership of lords so his dps not the greatest gimli is a tanky boy He's gonna use heal. He should be fine, bro. Maybe not. Actually, the Vorgs are dealing good damage to him. Oh, Sharku got the kill on him. Level 4. Sharku now has leadership now for the for the Vork Riders. It's pretty good. I mean, in a Dream Kiss scenario, he should always give it to the... I mean, these combos can be trampled. In a Dream Kiss scenario, he should always give the last hit to, to Lourdes to get him to level 5, but it's okay. Because also, Sharku is a good skilling hero with the My Vork is Hungry ability for more DPS and armor, which will make him also one of the stronger duelist in the battle for middle earth one but that's a very nice little sexy army from rohirrim archers i like the combination of the rohirrim warriors and rohirrim archer which will make it quite difficult for aizen to fight against map for, for map control you can see but there is a uh, lurts Uh, you need to protect your Rohirrim Archer though with your Rohirrim against the uh, Vork Riders. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Don't. Oh my god, bro. No, 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 no. He lost everything there. Sharku is waiting outside and he's like, come at me, bro. It's a big tap here for Aizen. He's up to 12 power points now in total. Ron is at around 6, so he just invested 6 of them into the ends. Ends will be special summoned. And now they are going to war, ladies and gentlemen. The last march of the ends begins. Wizard must pay. Come, my friends. <laughs> the ends are going to war. They actually did hella damage to the strike swatches. It's a level 3 Uruk pit, by the way. It's, it's the tankiest structure Isengard has in the base. But the ends don't care, bro. 6,500 HP. Uh, ends don't care. They are the siege weapons of, of uh, Rohan. And uh, unlike the other siege weapons from other factions, they have weaknesses, of course, like fire arrows. They are slow, but they are also fighters, which other trebuchet and catapults and ballista are not. So they can't fight heroes and units, but these dudes, they can. Gimli is back on the menu, boys. That's good. Level 6, Gimli. But again, the lack of money from Rohan, you can see the money. Uh, he has not even a thousand in the bank. He, is, he has to do a lot of stuff. And it's actually dealt hella damage. Look, that's a level 3 furnace with 5,000 HP. Giving a good damage there. But they have no more time remaining. If they would have time remaining, actually, they could keep going. Because they are not weak against arrows, you know. They can tank this for a long time. This game is Fiesta, but I like those kind of games. Really, I do, you know. Something different. Something the refreshment, like Gimli Rush. You know, in ranked game. I like it. Pobalin. Do it, little guy. 
Let's go now. But now the problem is Lourdes is level 5 or 6 rather. Even more important because of the pillage. Eisen is now a terrible way of making money. The devastation, uh, not devastation, the fuel the fires, the industry plus the pillage from Lourdes. Eco faction, 3 power points, 7 missing for AOD. 14 power point, 6 missing for Balrog. So Eisen is definitely ahead in the power point department. Legolas almost level 4. Gimli is a strong dude, don't get me wrong. He's gonna use the Slayer. Oh! Lock him down on the ground. The way Gimli's jump is designed to work, I will explain you guys. When you want to jump on this army, you don't want to jump from here on them. You want to get close to them and then jump behind them. And then your damage while you are mid-air is hella crazy. So you want to jump, you want to be here and then jump over them with Gimli. Trust me on that one, guys. Try it out and you will love that. Oh, Legola Lourdes, smart, smart move. I like the way Eisen is playing with the Lourdes, actually. He's doing a phenomenal job. I think he, need, he didn't lose a single time. Legolas has been killed, I believe, like for the second or third time now. At least second time, maybe third. Um, also, Gimli, super close to be dead. He's level 7. But killing these heroes, killing this Rohira Marcha over and over again, granting lots of power points to Eisen. He's now up to 16 and a half power points in total. That's super impressive. Only missing three and a half power points to unlock his ancient demon, Balrog of Morgoth. Legolas is only level four. He needs, like, you need to get Le Legolas to like level six mark, in which he will be super strong. And they have also Saruman. Level four also quite threatening, you know. You can kill heroes even like Saruman in a few seconds. So Saruman has to always keep the distance and get out of the out attack range from Legolas. Super important. But now he has like triple leadership for his army. Kaboom! Can we not make peace, you and I? Can he cripple? Oh my god, why did Gimli not chase Saruman down? Uh, again, bro, this is like, this is the survivor, bro. Back to back with one HP, man. Oh, Theorin! Oh my god, he killed him. Can he get away? Can he get away? No, he can't. <laughs> he can't, bro. <laughs> I like it, though. King is diving in, boys. Ooh, son! Get over here! <laughs> Land will be covered immediately if Gimli can survive this, bro. He's tanky, true. true. But is he tanky enough? Oh, he's gonna jump back in. Okay, the beast in the meantime falling apart. Uh, Balrog is dealing tremendous amount of damage. Should be using the breath fire immediately one more time before he falls off. And Gondor, uh, Rohan is, uh, is up to seven power points in total. Still is missing three power points. He's gonna summon now the ends for the defensive purposes. The Balrog has no more time left. He will be gone. Even some Lambirmil Vorik is attacking the well over there. And he's gonna put the units on top of the wall. Smart. Super smart, actually. And moving. So to dodge the rock throw damage. Also super smart. Okay, Rohan has nothing, bro. Is this the end of the game? Watch this. Oof. What a hit, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. He got AOD now. Out of that. Crazy. Level 10. Rohirrim warriors. Because no pikemen. They can demolish this uh, combos over and over again. The pikemen were far too way away. He has 5,000. He has the money to rebuild his base. And he's gonna summon now the AOD to kill the remaining army of Isengard. Maybe could have... Get away with not using it because he has a gate he can still close the gate and uh eisen should not be able to enter and you can save the eod for something more threatening and more bigger you know and the ends are uh, gone too but they did what they were paid for they were defending the the, the helm steep not the helm steep like the rohan castle you know very well done three power points uh lords back on the menu level six and a half also saruman has been killed before i missed that one actually maybe from the eod 
and double siege now. He's gonna bring more and more siege weapons now to the spot of, of Rohan. And Balrog already halfway through back again. Seven power points. He can go for the for the freezing rain too. Eisen is like a super crazy advantage in terms of money. That comes the freezing rain. And Rohirrim Archer level 8 though. Super, super strong. Even with the armor leadership from Sharku, you will lose this. But there comes also Lourdes. Be careful to not lose this. That's a very important unit. Each level, again, is so good on... Especially on Rohirrim Archer, it's uh, the, like the best thing ever. But also this level two, level 10 Rohirrim against Lourdes with, with Carnage. When I mean, Lourdes is still able to one-shot them, actually. Ooh, son, Lourdes is just built different, bro. There comes the Rem. The siege will begin. Uh, Gimli is being revived. He's level 7, though. Three minutes revive time for uh, heroes. Like, there are four tier heroes for, from tier 1 to tier 4. Tier 4 is being the, the, the longest, which are the... Nazgûl's in the Witch King, they have only one revive time because they are always level 10, which is 4 minutes. Other heroes from level uh, 1 to level 10 have different uh, revive times. For example, Legoras and also Gimli have the same revive times, but uh, Theoden is a bit shorter because he's one tier lower than them, you know? In the top tier, besides the top tier, uh, the tier 4 is exclusively for more the heroes like Witch King and Nazgûl, and the tier 3 is only for Aragorn uh, from Rohan, Gandalf from Gondor, and Saruman from Isengard. All the other heroes, besides the Hobbits and Smeagol, are in the tier 2. Actually, um, he doesn't revive his Legolas, no? That's a Fiesta game. I want to I see one more leap attack from Gimli, actually. Ooh, right now, right for ruin in the red zone. Ah. Ooh, get one shot at bro. He crippled him, he's in the gate. What happened there? How is this possible? You're in Kent party speed, but there is uh, the overwhelming army, bro. The overwhelming army. Saruman is coming too. Can we not make peace, you and I? He's gonna be able to destroy the siege works and delay a little bit more. But uh, his gate rushing now with the pikeman, that's unfortunate. Hearing King stands alone, actually. There is a Rohirrim Arch without any upgrades. What they can do against the Forge Bladed, upgraded, heavy armored pikeman, you can do nothing about him. Gimli should be. Gimli is somewhere. Ooh, Gimli is somewhere. For Balin! Uh, but he has no more time, actually. Now that's the problem. He has no more time. And he will die, bro. One dwarf, one man, alone. One dwarf, alone. Oh, got killed. Got killed. And Balrog is available now for the second time. And EOD has still like a two minutes cooldown. Because EOD was used far, far later than the Balrog. The Balrog is coming now. Wow. Swords are no more useful here. Flee, you fools! He's gonna summon the Ents. Ents are going to war. Fiesta is happening. He's gonna trample with the Ents a lot of the army. But this Aizen has so many war riders. I love that, actually. I love that. War rider, new meta. New meta. Let me tell you that much. New meta. And this Aizen does something what Saruman could in, in the films. Burning. Rohan down. I mean, I like the way Rohan played though. I respect it actually. Going for Gimli, making some crazy shenanigans happen was really fun to watch. I hope you guys also enjoyed. Mysterious has been defeated. Matthew played a very great game though. He was always ready. He had always the answer to this awkward playstyle from his opponent, uh, some great and crazy saves with the Lourdes, was very fun to watch. And if it was also fun for you to watch, make sure to subscribe to the channel because this channel is all about fun and all about nostalgia. If you want to get nostalgic, make sure 
to also tune in into the next live stream on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards, which is dedicated to the BFME games exclusively. But when they release the Age of Mythology Retold, I also will be playing that one actually. I'm into those, you know, old school looking RTS games. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay Beyond Standards. Peace out, boys.